Guys, this is Marty Grizzani or Marty Real Estate. I have John Garms with me to my right in the beautiful Cabo, Mexico, and I have the top ten Mexican <laughs> to ever be a real estate investor, Gabe Rodarte. What's up? Uh, welcome, boys. Welcome to the show. I am the guest host today here, <laughs> and uh, uh, sitting in for the one and only. Ronnie Walker, but uh, it's great to have you guys. How's everybody doing? Good. 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 Thanks Good. for having me. Hell yeah, boys. Hell yeah. I know, uh, John. You look good. I I, I got to tell you, you look you look good. I know you feel good. I, I'm sure you probably smell good. What's going on in Cabo right now? <laughs> well, the weather is the so weather's important. garbage. Um, <laughs> But one one thing I've I learned about being being a real estate mogul is patience. And when the conditions are this terrible, you just have to learn that it's not about you. It's it's about me. Right now, it's about <laughs> me. And uh, as long as John's happy, no, it's it's gorgeous out here, man. We're uh, we're excited to be here. I love it, man. Thanks for taking one for the team. Going to Mexico. I know you didn't want to do that. You had to do it, right? You had to take the vacation. Very painful. Well, Painful. it was either this or, or Texarkana, and I was really fighting for Texarkana, but the wife <laughs> left, so Mexico it is. A real good, humid, dry, heat-ish kind of a mix going on there. Yeah. yeah. What's good? What's, I mean, point that camera right down south. What do, you, what do you have right now? Oh, that's the beach right there. Nice. Yeah, so we're, we're staying at the, the beautiful Cape, or the Cape. Oh. And then uh, I guess nice. a point of the most prominent point of reference would be the arch which is one of those rock formations out there. I'm kind of a, a neophyte when it comes to the the Mexican travel destinations, but we're, you know, we're, we're figuring it out, I guess. No, it's super, super dope, man. Super dope. I'm going to actually, I got Gabe. I know, dude, I saw what was going on. There was yes, a event in Houston. Everyone's talking about it. Everybody yeah. knows about it. Everybody wants to know more <laughs> about it. Tell me about what happened last night. Oh, dude, it was freaking awesome, dude. We did uh, so North Houston real estate investors through on a group. You guys could check us out. Look at us. Uh, what's going on? We'll, we'll tag you in there. Uh, yeah, so we do quarterly events. Last night was freaking amazing, dude. We had the sponsors. A ton of people showed up. Like a ton of people showed up. So great turnout. Uh, we had panelists. The panelists just dropped some bombs uh, about like what's happening now in real estate and then some cool stuff to learn that you should be like honed in on. Like one of the questions was like, what skill do you do you would you really advise someone to hone in on? Not just in real estate investing, but in business in general. And it, it was kind of tailored towards real estate. And uh, it was cool to hear different different points of views. But they're really all the same. All right. They're really just like hone down on your own self, like train yourself up and then go do the work. And so bar none, the, 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 the best thing I heard the whole night by all four of them was just like ideas are great, but you got to put in the work. Mm. You know, ideas are really good, but you have to go through and do it. And then honestly, we're going to talk about it today. But all of them was talking about sales and building relationships is what got them to today. So I, what we did was we had them go back in time and say, okay, think about before real estate or maybe the first couple of years of, of real estate investing. Most of them have been doing it for 10 to 15 years, some of them 20, 22 years. And um, all of them attributed learning sales skills or people relationship skills. And they look to it today and go, man, I'm so glad I did that 15, 20 years ago or when I was 15 years old and I took that one course, whatever it was, or that job I had or the door knocking job. And so 
that's what was happening yesterday, guys. So go check us out. And so, Gabe, they were all saying, hey, communication and relationship building is not something to put like on the back burner for a business. That's something that like, hey, this is actually one of the most important pieces, if not the most right. important piece to the business. Now, what were they saying? Like, did they give any um, any strategies on how they keep communication? Like, because I... I got to admit, I think communication in my business is probably the most important, right? You know, telling right. people, uh, employees, sellers, giving them, you know, hey, this is what I'm looking for, right? I think, Gabe, you and I, we talked about the power of asking, right? right? Uh, and we can get to that in a bit, but did they say any strategies on what they've used or or what, what kind of strategies and how to keep communication or try to really help out? and add value to a, yeah. to a conversation. Yeah. So, so we had a multifamily guy, we had a, a, a huge money lender guy who does, a, he runs a, one, a huge money lending company. Uh, we had a turnkey person who, who, if you don't know turnkeys, they, they moved from doing rehabs and fixing them up to selling them to the end buyer, which is an investor to just building brand new, just open lots. And like, it's easier for us just to build all just build from scratch. So they're doing that. And they, they run 1,500 rental properties. And then I got another guy who's kind of like a, a go-to guy, boots on the ground in marketing and single family, good friend of mine, Matt. So all of them across the board, if you look at it, they all had their different niches of what to say. Some of them had 100 employees, right? And some of them only had five employees, right? And so the idea was, learning to have the conversation with someone else on the other side and mm -hmm. understanding that the person on the other side isn't really hearing what you think they're hearing. Right. right? And learning to have that conversation to clarify things, right. And to kind of have those uh, creating these foundational conversations where it's like, okay, Hey, uh, Marty did, was that cool? Did you get that? Yeah, I got that. So are you, are you clear on, on where I want to go with this stuff and where that is? Yeah, I'm clear. Okay. So, and then so you do these things where you're just involving people into the conversation, whether it's an employee, whether it's a team member, whether it's um, the seller that you're talking to um, or a seller of a multifamily property. Right. Or a tenant. Right. And so it's just really having great communication skills. And again, the question was this. The question was, what skill did you develop way back when that you can look to now and go, oh, my gosh, that opened up so many doors. I love that. I love that because I, and I can tell John, you know, the way you are again, as a real estate agent, right? That's your, that's what you do. That's your bread and butter. That's, that's your business. How important is communication? Like how, how important for you talking to either a motivated seller or, cause I, that's really the topic we want to talk today about, right? Is mo, you know, talking to sellers specifically. Um, do you see there's any big difference between talking to a seller who is looking to put their property on the MLS and list it, or in regards to listing it or, or maybe selling it off the market. Like, what have you found? What, what's some of the differences? What's some of the, just tell me what the heck is going on. Cause you look so good. Get the glasses on. I just know, you know, it's what's hard going to, on. It's hard to like ask them deep questions. So you just, you just want to look at them and go, dang, I just want to be there. Like let's grab, let's grab my inner tube and let's go to the beach. <laughs> you know, b before I answer that question, just just take a look. <laughs> now, um, you know, honestly, I think um, I have been selling stuff for 153 years. And, you know, you said it earlier, it, it just goes back to communication. I don't think it's as much, uh, whether it's residential, retail, or wholesale, or a subject to deal. It, it, and this is not a sexy answer, um, but it's one that gives me hope because I don't I don't think I'm tremendously gifted in terms of numbers and like when I when I think of someone as just a rain man and stuff like that, that's not me. I'm good with people, mm. and whether it's a a residential retail situation, I go into or or something on the on the investment side, I go into it with a. Mr. Client, Mrs. Client, what are you, what are you looking for? What do you, what are you hoping to achieve? And let me explain how I might be able to help pull that off. I rather love that. Than, well, ra rather than, rather than going on and on about how gifted I am or what my, like nobody cares. 
right? Nobody cares about how awesome I am. So I just go straight into what what are you after? And as they're answering the question in, in my in the back of my mind, I've got a, a handful of tools in my bag. I'm thinking, okay, that one won't work, that one won't work. And one one more thing, there's a there's an old saying, buyers are liars in the from the sales world. Yep. The sellers are liars too. And sometimes uh, and, and that's just because people are liars. Um, I'm going to try to make this not super philosophical or deep, but sometimes we answer the question based on what we think other people want to hear, or we're not a hundred percent clear on what we want and we don't want to look stupid. So we say what we think we're supposed to say. So just through asking questions and they, you know, we want to sell this property. We want to get the most money possible. Okay. Well, I love why, that. Why are we, why are we talking about selling it for cash? Like you said, you wanted an all cash offer. Why would you take an all cash offer from me? That's got to be discounted. Like why, why not just list it and put it on the market and let them explain what they want. And they'll tell you everything that you need to know to be able to, to direct them accordingly. Well, because I think you said it perfectly in, in, in because what you said, what I took from that was listening is almost just as it's really the important part. Right. It's asking the questions, those pointed questions, and maybe even having to ask again because you they might have, like you said, just given you an answer that you wanted to hear. So maybe you got to double down on that question. Is that what you really want? Yeah. Well, no, no. I well, and it's 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 easier. I'm, I'm learning that I think I just naturally have an inquisitive personality. So it's I've, I've found. In, in training salespeople and in, in teaching agents, that a lot of people in the marketplace they struggle with asking questions. They feel like they're being too personal and they're digging. And I, I see myself. This this can be a, a tender subject for people, but I see myself as the real estate physician, and this person that I'm sitting across from has real estate cancer. And my hmm. job is not to make them feel good, but my job is to get to the meat of the issue and figure out what's going to solve the underlying problem, not, not cover symptoms on the surface. And that's easier for some than it is for others, but I definitely think that's a high skill that if that's not something people come by naturally, that they really need to practice. That resonates. Gabe, go ahead. You're just- uh... Hi, man. I, I wanted to ask John just a question to elaborate a little bit. So. Uh, and I like the part of being inquisitive. So it's inquisitive. And I think Marty mentioned it uh, on a different call we were on is just like, hey, I have good intentions about what I'm trying to do here. Right. And it's kind of like that's what you're talking about, though, John. Right. It's like it's coming from a good place of looking at trying to help somebody. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's cliche, but Zig Ziglar used to say, if you focus on other people's problems and not your own, all of a sudden your problems go away. Right. If right. you make it more about what's good for that individual, I had a, um, in fact, this was a, a deal that I referred to Gabe yesterday. This gentleman called me, he's one of my JV partners, great dude. And he said, man, I've got this, this deal. Would you, would you list it and then train my partner on how to do the listing? Right. This is a really nice property. He's in the process of locking it up. And I think the knee jerk reaction is to say, man, that's a, that's a slam dunk. I will gladly take this deal and let you take notes and learn from me and I will be compensated. You will be compensated with education and everybody wins. And I told the guy, bro, you don't need to give me the listing. You have her take the listing and I'll just, I'll just help. Right. Because when well, not, to, not to make myself out to be some kind of a, a saint, I'm not a saint, but I think there are situations, I've had people do that with me, where I've, mm -hmm. I've tried to put money in their pocket thinking that's what I needed to do. And they said, you don't need to do that. You keep the money and I'll just help you. And I, I think sometimes they're, they're, that doesn't have to go across the board. But when I have lived out that philosophy in business, that's served me really, really well. But back to the communication thing i'm also very explicit when i'm talking to someone through that like i set the expectations on the front end like i need to be compensated in some way so that when 
that person comes to me later and says, hey, I have a, a solution, I can decide in that moment, how am I going to be compensated? Am I going to be compensated with money? Am I going to be compensated with a, a, a corner of the deal? Or am I going to be compensated in human capital? And I just keep a ledger of that and we make up for that down the road. But I feel comfortable in doing that in the moment. Yeah, I love that. I love that. That was very, I mean, that's, that's coming from your, the heart. And I know that's the way you are. So it's authentic. Yeah. And it's something that uh, it w resonates with sellers. It, it's, it's just that attracts people, right? That's, right? that's sort of an attraction type of attitude where I don't need this. I have plenty of deals, whether that's true or not. But if you kind of bring that sort of philosophy where I'm just here to help and I want to solve a problem, then nine, you know, then just like Zig Ziglar said, your problems are uh, should be taken care of as well. But Gabe, what do you, what are your thoughts on all that? Like, what do you, what are your what's like what's something that you've done? What's something that you what's your strategy when you talk to sellers? Like, what's something that you like to use or like to say or what what's what what do you do at Go Vertical that's different? You think? Uh, yeah. So so everyone really whenever we talk with folks and and. Uh, you know, when, when it gets to that whole thing of like, hey, let's figure out the pain points, it's totally true. You're you're eventually trying to figure out the pain points to see where they're at. Um, what I have seen people do is go directly to the juggler of going, okay, you're in foreclosure, so you're broke, you know, and just doing stuff like that. And you're not necessarily building that bridge, right? So um, we see the pain point of whatever it might be. And we just dig further. Now I use an older method because I've got trained up on an older method of just using the form, which is family occupation, recreation, and money. And so while we're talking to people about their property and the asset and stuff, and, and if it comes to me, it's already a hot lead, right? It's always something that needs to move now. So one, I, we always look at the urgency of what we can do to help them in urgency. I think that helped like right now in the marketplace that the Houston metro area in Texas is in, because I only do Texas. Um, it's kind of like, OK, what's the urgency? So we're trying to figure that stuff out where they're at there. Um, and then we kind of navigate from there lately because the urgency has definitely helped us to understand, like if they're in a rush and they need to get all this stuff done in timeline, I'm really their go to guy. If they got three months, four months, uh, and they're testing things out, and they might test it out on the market, or they might do some other stuff, I might not be their guy. It might be a great deal, right? But I might not be that for them. So that's some of the stuff we start off in the beginning is really just establishing timelines, time frames. What are you guys looking at? Okay, how would you get into the situation is really next. So it could be an heir, it could be like a title issue or anything like that. We got a $75,000 tax lien that we're clearing up. That was because of an heir that was connected to the property. And now we're working through that process. And so we're digging through that. Inevitably, I'm always asking the question to some degree of going, OK, well, either how does that make you feel? It does sound cliche. OK. Uh, OK, so how does that like what, how does that what kind of position does that put you in right now, Marty? Like, man, that sounds tough. You know how like yikes um, or. Um, how does that make you feel like how did like they told you that your family told you that bank told you that how does that like what, what's happening right now with you? I love that because I think talking about I think getting someone to tell you their problem is an, is an incredible rapport builder. Right. right. Someone that's going to give you a seat like a secret, basically. Right. Because they're not typically promoting these things right. all over the place. When someone gives you that problem now, you're now you just built that rapport. It's not going to go away. You, you got a problem from them. Uh, and, and what I find that's helpful is when you when you give something, usually you're going to get something, right? So when I'm talking to a seller and I give them a piece of personal information or give them a piece of just anything, just here's, right. you know, hey, my family also you know owns a property right down here. I used to play in the playground right down here for years and years. You know, just something personal. Tell them a little bit about, I'm a human. Right. You know, like, hey, I'm a human. You're a human. Let's see if I can figure this out. And I, and I don't buy every house and I may not be able to help you or buy this house, right. but I'm going to help you like in regards to I'll point you in the right direction. Right. Like John said, hey, maybe it's a better idea if you just list the property and put a sign in the ground. Right. Listen to what they're going to say right. after that. No, I don't want to deal with a realtor. No, I need to sell. Blah, blah. OK, so now they're taking away all those things for you, because the truth is this. 
if you're f- finding a deal, there's motivation with the deal. And we don't necessarily, I don't want to talk to a seller who's not motivated. Right. Right. So the having those questions that John was saying and Gabe, that, you know, having the questions is what's going to let us know, are you motivated or not? Because if you're not, right. I don't necessarily, I don't want to talk to you. I want you to talk to John about listing it. And I might get paid right. on, on that end. But that's not my business model. So, sir, I, I love you, but you need to talk to, you know, John Garms at Garms Realty. I, I'm not going to be able to help you, but I'm going to point you in the right direction. So, yeah, that well, makes it. I think, there, I think that there's something magical about when you're willing to walk away and they sense that and that you're not you're not trying to convince them. Like, that's part of my standard deal, no matter who I'm sitting across from. I tell them, I am not here to convince you of anything. Right. I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm here to just basically explain how the marketplace is behaving and you decide what's best for you. I'm here to be a guide. But if you ever get the sense that I'm trying to sell you or convince you, I need you to let me know because that's not my intention at all. And then saying like Marty, that the way that you put that was beautiful. Like, listen, I may not, I'm probably not your guy. But you know who you do need to talk to? My friend over here. I'm going to have him call you. That's yeah. so good. Yeah, and that's so good. We just did one uh, this past Thursday, emergency call from uh, actually a realtor. And it was off market. So, uh, the seller, it was a seller uh, relative type deal. One's in the hospital. They got to take them back to North Carolina or whatnot. And I, I, we had photos and everything, took photos. And when I looked over it, the person got me back on Sunday and then um, I didn't get back to her soon enough. And so, um, cause she was talking back and then like three hours go by, I was hanging out with the family and she's like, man, I really needed some answers. I went and talked to somebody else and this is what I came up with. And the offer, I mean, their offer was 50 grand over what I could even comprehend even paying. And I'm just going, you know what? Do you need help with this? And they're like, yes. I'm like, look, here's what you would do. And I just went through three steps. I'm like, you could do this, you could do this and through this, and you'll help out your seller more effectively than going through me. And right now I can't help your seller. They're not willing to sub two. They got to get rid of it fast and they could get a better, the house was in great shape in a great neighborhood, like almost moving ready. So it just needed paint. I mean, it had everything else. And I'm going, I, I just, I can't help you. You know, so I helped her go through all these steps, you know, just just through text message. She's like, oh, my gosh, I didn't even like stuff that you could do that creates value. She'll probably bring me a deal some other time. You know? Yes. Yes. And that's the power of doing things the right way, because it's crazy. You do something the right way and people take notice. They go, wow, you were a scumbag because sometimes the majority of people do some scummy stuff. Right. But that's if you don't want to last long. Right. So if anybody is watching this and, and you're someone who really wants to take this seriously, if this is something that's a business for you, if this is something that you think is going to be a long term thing, then you need to do things the right way, even if it doesn't put money in your pocket. Right. right. Because that is what we are. We're, we're in this for the long term. We're in what what is. What is doing things the right way do? It builds relationships. Right. And what do relationships do? Well, those are great for business because those things start to bring in deals. They start to talk positively about you. When someone goes to Gabe, hey, how's it with working with Marty? He's going to say something positive in that. Even if I have a lower offer, it is going right. to win me the deal because they go, I just trust this guy. I just know he's right. going to do the job. He's going to close, right? So- yeah, that's uh, that. That's incredible, Gabe. That, that's incredible, John. You, what were you going to say? Did you, you have something you were going to add there? Yeah, I think that um, one thing that's helped me is there are going to be certain individuals that will try to take advantage of your good nature, um, and I, I feel like I have got a, a pretty decent sense of discernment. If I sense that someone is doing that, I just call it out, and I'll, I'll. I'll say, listen, man, I like, like, let's say it's a JV partner. This, this was more predominant with JV partners than it was with sellers. But if like, I would have certain people reach out to me and, Hey, let me ask you a quick question. Let me ask you this. And if it gets to be the point where you, uh, you feel like they're taking advantage of that, you can just say, it. man, I'd love to help you, but I think you're going to need, I think what you need is hire a coach. 
is that what you're asking? Are you are you wanting to hire me as your coach? Maybe as a as a recommended script. But at the end of the day, I think that if you can just to bring it back to the scope of the, the what we're talking about here is if you can make it more about serving your prospects, serving your your respective clients, and not necessarily what's best for you. That's that 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 has served me very well in business. I love that. I love yeah. that. I want to talk about guys something in regards to again talking to sellers because that's one of the reasons why we're on this call. You know, I get asked this question, right? Because I promote myself as a salesperson. I am a salesperson. My history was in sales, uh, selling over the phone, right? So a million dollars worth of, of sales over the phone is something that we were supposed to do, right? In in right. two years, right? But five hundred thousand dollars worth of sales each year. So you, you really needed right. to hit a million a year or every um, every two years. So you know one of the things about selling or talking to sellers is imperfect action is going to be way better than imperfect and you know of, of not doing anything, right? So right. people go, well, how do you start? What's your script? What's the script? There's guys. The script, there is a baseline that I'll certainly right. give here, uh, but it's going to be super different for everybody. And all I can tell you is if you're brand new and you go, I want to do this, I want to start talking to sellers, you just got to start and then you'll start to figure it out, right? It, it's going to be like going to the gym. If you're a jiggly mess right now, right, because you haven't started it yet, well, you got to just show up. You just right. got to get there, pick up the phone and make the dial, take the punch in the face, but then show up the next day and you will get better. And you just like going to the gym, you'll start to see results, right? So I think that's a big thing is you hear that all the time, but just start, just give the call, just start talking to sellers because you're going to learn from them, you're gonna learn from what they give you. They're, you're gonna learn, hey, you're gonna learn, I'll tell you this, you're gonna learn a lot more calling or cold calling, all right, in three months talking to sellers than you would in two years coaching right. um, on how to talk to a seller, right, or, or real estate. Yeah. Because you talk to a landlord, they're gonna tell you everything that you gotta know about being a landlord. So now you could use these stories when you talk to a, an absentee owner. Same with probate. You're going to know how to approach that with empathy and a different way of going at it. Same thing with foreclosure. So it's all going to be differently tailored, these scripts, but the only way of doing it is by actually getting on the phone. Gabe, what were your, what were your thoughts there? Um, I love this because the, the, and that's really some of the conversation we had at this event that we're doing last night is this. So many people spend the time planning things out and doing stuff and ideas are, are really pointless if you can't take action on them. Um, I think one of the, I, I love what you're saying, Marty, about uh, taking action and going back and doing it, like learning like baptism by fire mentality and just going and doing it. This is stuff that you were sharing with me the other day of the style that you like and helping people get in there and start doing it now, right? And so I just wanted to add to that, like there's so much power and weight in that. Um, I know younger people, even folks I was talking to yesterday, dude, man, I really need your help. I really need your help to do this other stuff. I'm looking at their plan. They're telling me what they're doing. And I'm like, well, who's on the phone? Well, I got a cold card to do this. And I got a cold caller. And then I got this and I got the skip tracing. They got this massive plan. I was like, when do you get to talk to the people? Like, when are, <laughs> when are you doing this work? You know? And so how do you know what the cold caller is really doing and how to help them go through that process? Right. And so if they have to do the work. And so before, I mean, Marty, you've helped me with some text blasting and some other things that we were doing. But we already had the plan beforehand. I knew the people I wanted to get a hold of and the avatar and the issues that they're good with. And so I think to add to that and, and John, you've helped me out, too, with grabbing the perspective of if there's 10 strategies on a single family home, that's 10 different types of sellers, and different pitches that you're doing. Right. And in the beginning, you can't just go, you know, that's. Now that's if you do that and you add another strategy to it, you're talking about 20 different things that you have to do with one person and funnel them in. And you're so broad and you're all over the place. It's kind of like, OK, let me niche down a little bit more into the type of seller that I'm really good at working with. Right. 
And that's kind of what uh, I was, when I was talking with John the other day, he was like, look, dude, niche and niche in these areas. And I loved it because um, I already had the idea, but he just brought in something that I just needed to hear at the moment. So it was really good. Yeah, man, I, I can't kick this horse enough, this dead horse of just doing discovery and asking questions. And uh, what's the old movie, uh, Glenn Berry, Glenn Ross, where he's talking about uh, telling's not selling. Like, stop telling people things and ask them questions. You know, obviously I'm here because you want it's a seller, you want to sell this property, right? Right. Why do you want to sell? tell me what's going on? Like what what's going on in your world where that's that's what you've come to the end of is we have to sell it. And when they answer the question, a lot of the salespeople I've talked to, they feel like they're asking a rhetorical question or a dumb question by digging into motivation. Right? Like, okay, well, so you're in pre-foreclosure, but would you do you want to try to keep the house why why not try to salvage this or what how does that make you feel like that can feel like such a dumb or how do you think it makes me feel but if you'll get over the fear of asking some of those questions i i, I had a early on in my sales career i had a guy tell me if you say it they doubt it but if they say it it's true so a lot of the questions i ask i already know the answer to but I want them to hear themselves say the answer. I love that. Because something just happens, whether it's at a subconscious level, I don't really care how or why it works, but it's super effective. And I think that makes me different from the other salespeople that they're talking to. Because if you line up a hundred people, they're asking, why are we selling it? Well, we're in pre foreclosure. Okay, great. Well, here's what I can do for you. So if you're the one person that's like, Man, I talk to a lot of people. I know that that's painful. Like, what's that doing to you guys right now? And digging in on some of that heart level stuff, like it makes you different. And you you're asking, to- you're asking pain, you're asking questions that are not dumb. I don't think they're thinking that it's dumb. They're saying, I don't want to ask that question. But that's yeah. how you get. That's how you get to the seller. That's how you build that. Is you're asking tough questions because yeah. you're not exactly sure what they're going to say. You're, you're, those are, Oh, I should say this. They're not, they're not just tough. They're uncomfortable. And the uncomfortable right. questions are the questions that are necessary in order to get report and then get the sale. In my opinion. Exactly. They're with, by them answering that question, they are, they are anchoring themselves to you and you're the one that's going to get the deal. Right. And if you didn't, maybe you didn't dig deep enough or you didn't connect enough or you were just you were just going through Marty, you're in pre foreclosure. What's that mean to you? Right? right. Like that like there's a way that you ask it where you're genuinely trying to connect. And if you, you either have to care or you have to think that you care, they have to think you care. John, you killed it right there because it's it's they don't they don't care how much you know, right? until they know how much you care. So those questions are a caring question. So stop thinking this is uncomfortable and stop saying, and now go, this is a caring question. This is a question that shows that I care, shows that I'm interested, and it shows that I'm actually someone who, I'm not here to, listen, I'm not, if, if I could help you, I'm gonna help you, right? But I need to know these things because it's gonna help me help you, right? Okay, so we do yeah. this all the time though, guys. I mean, here's, here's the thing. We've all done it before. I was out at a, a, a family thing and there was some uh, some friends there, some some good friends. And <laughs> I couldn't get a word out. Like I would share part of a story and, you know, I'm kind of a funny guy. So I have punchlines, right? Like I got the punchline ready to go. And every time this person would inter, inter, interrupt the whole story. Well, what Sounds about like me? Whole- And I'm just going on. And so after a while, I was just really quiet. I was like, you know, towards the last time of this, this family outing thing that was going on. And then, you know, they go around and he actually talks to my wife. He's like, man, it's like, is he bothered or whatever? Like, he's not really saying anything. And she's like, oh, you know, I don't know. And I was just like, look, if I'm going to keep on being interrupted all the time, I don't really want to say anything. Right. And so what I, even for my team and what I train is like, if you want a great relationship, then you talk to John and you go, John, hey, dude, how does this make you feel? And then you just shut up, 
right? I mean, this is with your spouse, with a friend. I mean, obviously not with some stranger off the street, but if you're trying to build a relationship with someone, you really need to just be quiet. I mean, unless the relationship's already established, but if you're building something new, you have to create these anchoring points. And a lot of that comes from you just being really quiet and teaching yourself. We call it the pregnant pause. I don't know what you guys call it, but we just call it the pregnant pause where it's like, okay, so um, how come, like, what does this do with your relationship with your spouse? I mean, you're going in, you're in pre foreclosure. Like, what's happening? Like, what's her thoughts on this? And you're just quiet, you know? And then it's like, well, you know, we've had it, you know, and then, then something comes up and then you're just listening to see, uh, is there family arguments? Is it a divorce? Is it they're trying to save their marriage? Is it that, that they, they have kids that have other, like my wife is more concerned about this other stuff and I really want to help her go, you know, she has a voice obviously, or, or he has a voice, right? And she's just, she's just the data collector for you or him. Right. And so you want to build that relationship because there's because in those relationships, guys, we're talking to there's not just one seller. Sometimes there's two sellers on a house. And if we're dealing with heirs, there's four or five or six different sellers on these properties. Right. So you got to build these anchoring points. You got to do it quickly. You got to do it fast. So being quiet for me has helped me so much by just letting them talk. Um, and then if they, you know, Obviously, you got to dial it back if you're overselling, if you're letting them talk too much or stuff like that. Like that's that's an issue that you have to walk through. Right. So anyways, I just wanted to say that because we do this all the time of just over talking people sometimes. And I think that's what we do out of nervousness. Right. Where we don't want to we ask a nervous question like, well, how do you how does this make your spouse feel about this issue? I mean, you guys are in foreclosure. I mean, I'm asking because blah, 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 blah. No, you just say. How does it make your spouse feel? So good, Gabe. So, so good in the, in the waiting. So this, the, actually the second toughest part is not just the question. It's the, the shutting up, right? right? So when you ask the question, shut up. Cause those seconds where that person is going to start talking, you, uh, human nature want to start blabbing again because you right. want to fill that silence with something. Right. And, the key though is to really let them think about that question right because they're going to give you now something that can be used to help uh you know bring them along to what i like to call the plan right. you know you can't get someone to jump off the bridge right in the beginning you got to bring them along down the plank so that by the time you ask that hey let's sign right here they're jumping and they're, they're going right to you. Right. right. So yeah, it's uh, th that's beautiful. You know, like you said, another thing that I thought was beautiful, like a really smart thing. You're not, if you're just talking to one of the sellers, if it's a husband and wife, you're, you're missing out huge. Mm -hmm. I go, put me on speakerphone. Let me talk to both of you guys. You guys got, when's the time you're both going to be home. Right. Yeah. It's about qualifying John, you know that, right? Like, it's like, you need to make sure when you're setting the appointment that it's a qualified appointment where you have all the decision makers, even if it's just John Smith on the, you know, on the deed, if he's got a wife or someone that's going to help make that decision, you need both of them there. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I actually just had this happen uh, in the last couple of months. I had a, a husband and wife that I was helping on uh, the residential retail side and the husband's stance was as long as she's happy i'm happy so i'm going to stay in the car with the kiddo and y'all go inside and it, they were first time home buyers and she kept walking through these houses and she's like man i just don't know i don't know and what i was able to realize is that she felt like she was making this massive decision all by herself hmm. and i grabbed him i said look bro you with the best of intentions feel like you're handing the reins over to her but she's freaking out we need all of us walking through these houses and you need to have an opinion you can't just say well whatever she thinks because this is a big decision if she makes a bad decision it's all on her and she's going to make no decision so we're not we're not looking at any more houses unless you're going to be present if we need to find child care let's do that they bought the next house and John, that's 
John, that's gold. Because I'll tell you this, if you didn't say that, right, they may have found another person or you would have just given up, right? Let's say you would have, you would have given up or you would have gotten to run around so many times you would have given up or whatever would have happened. But because you who are savvy and you asked that question, you made them take ownership of this decision, right? Both of them, you were able to get the job done. Because if you just were to say, okay, yeah, it's just Mrs. Smith that's going to make the decision. You went from house to house to house. You would have given up. And then the next realtor who would have asked that tough question to say, hey, Mrs. Smith, you're either coming or I really can't work with you guys. You, you absolutely, uh, you, you made the deal happen. So that's good for you, but it's good for them too because they made the decision to get Marty, how do yeah. you go about doing that whenever you're talking with sellers, with, with multiple sellers and going on? What is some of the stuff that you guys do? Who's that question for, Gabe? For you, Marty. Well, it you know me, selling advertising back in the day, if I'm talking to the dentist – Okay. Uh, I need the office manager and his wife. Where's the wife? When, he, you know, I, I really truly believe that if you can have one or so if one person's making the decision, it's not as strong in my opinion. You have two people who are all committed or if you have a, four sisters, like we just went to an appointment last night and it's a probate. There's four sisters that need to sign. I go, there was two there. I go, get the other two on the phone. Get the other two on the phone because I want to have this dialogue. You can't recreate this, you right. know, again, I'm, I'm, I'm a professional, but you can't recreate this professionalism, this energy. They got to see, wow, now I know who I'm talking to. I can hear this guy in the phone. This guy knows what he's talking about. This guy sounds professional. I can tell he probably has a great hair uh, day today. Uh, all those things that are important, the confidence, I need to talk to you, everybody. Bring them all in. Let's get it. Let's make this a party. So now they are all agreeing so that if Jamie or Heidi weren't there and they go, well, well what's up with Marty? Oh, who's Marty? Oh, I don't know. I don't. I, you got to talk to Jim. Jim's Jim's uh, a guy I know who buys a uh, rental property. No, see, you lost it. It's gone. So you want to get as many people as you can. So they all agree. They can all ask questions. You answer those questions, you know, extremely well. Again, you're, you're a sales professional. That's something that you need to be able to do is ask those questions and make sure that they are answered properly. Right. But yeah, I need everybody and I'm going to recommit and get them to recommit. Hey, I just want to let you guys know, I get the paper signed, right? Is there any reason, again, this doesn't work. I'll rip this up right now. It, do, it won't hurt my feelings. I promise you. No, Marty, we are, we are ready to go. Great. So I'm, I'm double confirming, triple confirming, double stamp, triple stamp. Don't care. Need it done. Uh, and it's got to be done that way. Man, that's really good. Um, there are people that like in that scenario, let's say you have the two sisters that were present and were they in this scenario, the decision makers? Yes. Yes. They're like the boots on the ground decision makers. They're the ones that are there currently in the state. The other two are kind of, around. So I really needed them to, you know, get them on the phone. Let, let's get them both on the phone. Let's talk to them together. Let's all talk together and, uh, and hash this out. Cause I want to do this once. So you had two, you had two sisters making the decision, but you had two more sisters that were a part of the scenario that you needed them to be able to sign off on. Yes. Right. So in a scenario like that, I think the tendency for a lot of people is just, well, I've got the decision makers here. Let's just go with them. Where the other folks, what we used to say, they can't say yes, but they can say no. Mm -hmm. And I've had it happen so many times where those other two sisters kill the deal because I didn't do a good enough job getting them around the table like Marty did. Right. That's so, That's good. so good. Well, just ask. You got to ask for it, right? <laughs> You know, like a lot of people yeah, won't even ask. Yeah, now, it, it's, not gonna happen. it's not going to happen every time, right? It's not going to happen every time. Like, you know, that, that this might come out of left field, okay? That there's a, a brother that's, you know, helping the, the mom out, right? You, you know, the, the, the father passed away. You didn't know there was any other family members, right? You're, you're, you're going out there. You're, you're pounding the pavement. You don't always are there. But if you can and if you can ask and you can just say, hey, 
why don't we just get them on the phone or listen, let's stop today. Let's find a time that works for everybody. I can come back. Cause again, I want to do this once, right? Yeah. I want to be amped up and then give them my presentation and show them why me one time and then get this done and get this moving. Right. So, yeah. so absolutely. I stole, I stole this from Ronnie Walker. He, um, you know, in, in, well, how do you identify who the decision makers are? Sometimes it's not as, it's not a good idea to just come out and say, well, who are the decision makers? So what Ronnie taught me is, is there anybody that would be upset with you if they found out they sold this property without consulting you first? Well, yeah, my brother-in-law is an attorney. We, you know, he, he's going to want to look at any contracts. I want to know that before right. I'm ready to get a signature. I don't yeah. want to find that out as we're getting the DocuSign set up. At that point, it's usually too late. Too late. Too late. because Or it might come back. It might not. But again, it's you want to be – we all know that the first time you're in front of them is usually – that's when you're going to get the – the percentages are way higher in our favor, right? It, it, it's not every time, but you want the percentages in your favor in this line of <laughs> line of work. Play um, with a stack deck. <laughs> play with a stack deck when you can, you know. And I, I also just really want to bring up this point, guys. When we're talking to sellers, it's not your job to try to make up a motivation for somebody, right? We're, 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 we're that's just you're wasting time trying to. Hey, no, they will have motivation. Your job is to bring it out. That's it. If they don't have motivation, go, get away, move on. And a lot of people, beginners, they try to make a deal happen. They grind to just get this deal and it's not there. A deal, okay, a lot of people don't know this. A deal is a motivated seller. That's what a deal is. Yeah. People go, I don't know how to find a deal. What's a deal? It's motivation. Right. That's what that is. It's it's getting a motivated seller that on the line and, and talking to them. You know, Gabe, what what's going on? What are your thoughts there? Is that am I crazy? I'm just thinking. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I think it's a beautiful thing. Um just because I was having conversations with people yesterday at the event, and there is uh a misunderstanding and I think I wish I would have had those words yesterday because you know things are happening I'm talking to different people saying hi and stuff and and people were asking questions about deals and stuff like that and I'm looking for properties I'm really you're looking for a motivated seller right it could be land it could be multifamily it could be anything but the person just has to be in a place to go and look I, I really just want to sell you know and, and normally it's a, it's an as is shape or something like that it's a motivation so you're right, dude. I, I, I loved it. Top level, right? If we're thinking high level here, we're sorters, right? We're looking for gold, right? So we have a bunch of just land and rock in there. And you got to sort that out, right? To find that golden nugget. And that's in a perfect world as a real estate investor, wholesaler, you're just sorting. Are you motivated or not? Are, <laughs> This right. isn't rocket science, right? right? We just want to find who the who the motivated seller is, right? And and here's the here's why you want to find the motivated seller because then you can tell them right in the beginning, right? A motivated seller will leave equity on the table for yeah. peace of mind, right? Right? They're going to leave. You'll know they're motivated by having the conversation and just telling them, listen, this is how I make money, so. I'm obviously an investor. I'm not going to buy at XYZ price and I'm going to be buying here because I am fast, efficient. I'm all cash. I'm going to take care of all of these problems in regards to this property for you. I'm going to take this off of your off of your chest, so to speak. But are you, you know, is that does that sound something like you're willing to do? Yeah, I I, I know there there's been plenty of times where a seller goes, I know I'm not going to be able to get the full amount, but it's not about that. It's about, I want this done yesterday. And right. I know that you're someone who can get that done. Is that, is that true? Right guys? Yeah. Is that fair to say? Uh, I love that. Why would you sell to me at a discount when you could throw a sign in the yard and list this thing and get full price? Right. Like, that's how I ask. It. And you're giving and, them the and, options. And a lot of times they don't know, 
that you want a discount, especially, you know, where I'm at in Dallas, the market is so hot and there's no inventory. They think, oh, well, they think I'm the motivated party, but they need the one that's motivated. Otherwise, I'm probably wasting my time. That's true. No doubt. That's true. I tell, I, I've, I've worn this story out, but I, I tell people when I, uh, we're, we're coming up on 22 years that Katie and I have been married. When I met her, I didn't just look her up and down and go, I'm interested, let's do this. Interest alone is not enough. Like selling a house is a big deal. It's easy for us because we do a lot, but selling a house and moving and all the coordination, that's a pain in the butt. Why would somebody put themselves through that? Well, I'm just, I'm just curious to see what I can get for my house. I'm not your guy. You know what? I'll give you a, I'll give you, a, I'll write you a check right now for a hundred grand. And it's a, you know, half a million dollar house. So like, why would I do that? I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> well, why would I, why would I spend hours sitting here trying to convince you to sell your house? You don't want to sell it. Right. You know, like, are, okay. So when you sell this house to me, let's say you're happy with my number. Where are you headed next? Well, we hadn't quite decided. I'm not your guy. Yes. I want I want motivation. I want pain. I want them to have all that stuff figured out where they're like, all we need is somebody to come along with a bag of cash and set us free from this. Okay, set set you free from what? What's that look like? How long has that been going on? How does that feel? How much sleep are you guys losing? What, what stress is that adding? What's that doing to, to your kids? What's that? What's that like dig, 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 dig? And if they don't have really good answers to this stuff. I am wasting my time by by sitting there having. Well, I'll, I'll take that back. The only way it's not a waste of time for me is if if I see it as practice asking good questions. No. But once I get my reps out, I'm I'm done. No right. doubt. No no doubt, and uh, I, I I love that because it's again, there's nothing there. It's you want to get this thing moving to the next yes, right? All these these no's lead you to that, to that. Yes. So you need to, again, go through the dirt <laughs> to, to, to get, to get to right. the gold. Right. But the, right. but the different ways that we can funnel right now, this is a little bit more of a, as we, as we proceed and get better and better as it, you know, there's a little bit more funneling systems we set up so that when that lead comes in, we know that it is, uh, ready and raring to go, but you, that's again not necessarily something that happens um, happens day one. Yeah, Gabe, do you have any pro tips? Right, like I, I have a pro tip. Uh, we're we're kind of winding down here, so you know one of my pro tips, and, and then that way you guys can think about your pro tip to give is well, two of them. Number one, don't say hey, let's sign this contract. Right, sign the contract. You know, I like to say hey. When you get this, we just have to make sure you approve the agreement, right? Uh, signing a contract, it's just, uh, ah, let me talk to my lawyer. Listen, I'm not here, you know, all I want you guys to do, once we fill this out, just need you to approve the agreement. Just little, little, little teeny things, not going to be a hundred percent winner for you, right? That's right. not, like a, that's not your golden gun, but it's something that is going to help increase, I believe, your, uh, your closing ratio. The, the other thing is, I, I really believe that, you should be able to help the person move out, right? So if you tell them, hey, in some cases when the deal's really good, I'm gonna take care of your first and last month's rent for your new apartment, all right? Now I'm gonna write the check to the landlord, just so you know, but I'm gonna do that for you so that you guys are ready and ready to go uh, once we purchase this property. How's that sound, Mr. Seller? If I could buy cash as is, and I'm gonna help you with your first and last month's rent, you know, is that something you'd be looking, is that something you'd work with me on? Would you Would you move forward with me? And typically, that should help the, uh, the the closing as well. So, so uh, Gabe, why don't you start with any pro tip as we finish this off? Uh, man, I'm just uh, what you said was really good. We use um, we just say stuff like "Hey, paperwork." We don't really call anything like contracts or anything like that. We just like yeah, we just you know as long as we just come to an agreement on the paperwork. That's it. Um, they're like, okay. And I'm like, it's just normal stuff we got sent over. You know, we, we don't make very heavy stuff on any of our, like we don't, we try not to make anything heavier than what it should be. Um, and so that's it there. Um, as far as pro tips with the sellers, um, man, we covered so much. We try to, what we say is like, we just try to make hard things easy. 
All right. I love that's, that. That's just how we do stuff. I did that even with my kids and my family. Like if they, if my kids are making stuff really hard for their, for my mom or for their mom, for my wife, I say, guys, you making it hard right now? And they're like, yeah, we are. And I'm like, okay, well, we, we make hard things what? And they go easy. I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's just try to, how can you make it easier? Right. Love that. And so I think it's just a thing that I share with my team is like, okay, if this is a tough thing right now, yeah. Okay. How can we just make it easy to get this to the finish line? Um, and so we do that from all things. So that's kind of our pro tip with just kind of working with sellers. Like we, we try not to make it any harder than what it is already. You know? Right. Right. So, you know, love that, dude. That's yeah. perfect. I love that. I'm going to, I'm going to absolutely steal that. I think my pro tip would be, um, Figure out where the, so the, the short way of saying it uh, is called an upfront contract. Figure out where the deal is going to go sideways and just address that on the front end. So when I was buying for Ronnie last year, I, I figured out that there were about 10 areas that when I would get the agreement in front of people, they would get tripped up or they would have questions or objections. So what I started doing is I made a list of these 10 points. And I started calling it the, the, the uh, actually there were 11 points, but the, the first one was really more getting the plane in the air. But I would just tell the sellers, once we figured out what their motivation was and it was time for me to put the agreement in front of them, I would say, listen, there's 11 ways this thing can go sideways. So what I want to do right now is talk through those 11 points, right? So yeah. point number one, Here's my job. Here's your job. Here's what I want. Here's what you want. Any, you know, and I would explain that. Any problems there? Nope. And it would be the easiest one, the easiest one to say yes to. All right, next thing is this. Next thing is this. And about halfway down was really where it got to the sticking point. And that was, I got tired of people saying, I'm going to have my attorney look at this. So I would have JV partners ask me, like, man, what do you say when they say, I, I want my attorney to look at this? Like, I address that on the front end. So is there anybody that's going to be upset if you sell the property without it? No. All right. You, you, you don't have an attorney or brother-in-law or your dentist or somebody that you're going to want to show this agreement to before you decide to move on. No, it's just me. Okay, perfect. So by the time I got through all of those points, I would say, we basically just went through my entire agreement. And if you didn't have a problem with any of those 11 points, you're not going to have a problem with my agreement. What's your email address? So, Getting an, getting an upfront agreement or an upfront contract, as it's known, that if it's going to if it's gonna crap the bed, if it's going to die, let it die early so that you're not wasting your time and you could be out on the beach somewhere instead of being on the bed. <laughs> I love that. And that was, that, was, that was a perfect way to wrap it up. Again, it's all about getting to the motivated seller and you don't want to be, you know, hanging on to something that's just not there. It's a waste of time, energy, and you're going to become more deflated. You're, you're not going to last long in this business if that's something that you, uh, if, if that's something you practice. So guys, that's it guys. That's the show. That was a crushing yeah. show. We smashed out of the park. We got two absolute Nobody juggernauts. Gabe and John. Goosebumps, Goosebumps. brother. Goosebumps. <laughs> Goosebumps. Let's go. Uh, anyways, have a great rest of the week, gentlemen. All right, guys, and, uh, we'll see you guys next week. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mike.